This PowerPoint goes over the introduction to PHP, so we're going to be covering just the basics of PHP. So let's begin with the history of PHP. Well, PHP was created in 1994, and it's one of the foundational technologies of modern web development. Um, it still remains one of the widest used server side technologies on the internet, and it provides the underlying code for many popular content managed systems. Um, the CMS that we have learned about like WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla. So it really is the underlying code for them. Um, a CMS, as we learned, is what allows users to create and update their own websites without having to write a lot of the complex code themselves. So this is all done with PHP. So we know that PHP provides this underlying code for many e-commerce sites as well, like WooCommerce and Magento. So we're going to learn more about WooCommerce in the coming weeks. Okay, so these e-commerce platforms offer a number of tools for selling products online, and this way companies can focus on other aspects of their business without having to implement complex programming logic from scratch, and that is why CMS is heavily used. PHP contains built-in functionality for interacting with web data. Vanilla PHP or PHP, without any other tools, can be used on its own to create web application backends. But we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Once we're comfortable with the basics of the PHP language, we have our pick of powerful PHP frameworks to choose from. So these frameworks are what provides the scaffolding and the solutions to common problems in backend web develop development. Some popular PHP frameworks are Laravel, CakePHP, and Symfony. So how is PHP used in HTML? PHP is often used to build the dynamic web pages, right? That's why it's used in CMS. A dynamic web page, what is that? Well, it's where one visitor, where each visitor to the website gets a customized page that looks different than how the site looks to another visitor. So in contrast to static web pages, which provides the same content to every visitor, the dynamic web page is dynamic, it is customized. Or it can be customized. All right, so in order to create this dynamic behavior, PHP was designed to work closely with HTML. PHP can be used directly in line within an HTML document. So when the website is delivered from the back end to the front end, the PHP content is executed and then added to the HTML to form just one seamless HTML document. Okay, so this is a static page and we have all created this before. Okay, this is the browser, the user, we have the web server and the web server has the HTML files and the CSS files and the image files and um, just <clears throat> delivered to the browser, right? Um, in a dynamic web page or a website, in that situation, we have the we have a few more players, okay? So we have the browser, the user, we have the web server. We also have the HTML files and the CSS files, all the other files, and the PHP files. So in order to kind of, so let's say, convert that into something that your browser can read, we have the PHP interpreter and the database that also work in conjunction with all that. Now let's look at the syntax. The start of inline PHP is denoted with this, angle bracket, question mark, PHP, and the end is denoted with this, question mark, close angle bracket. So here we have just a regular HTML uh, code, right? Markup, so just the paragraph tag. This HTML will get delivered as it is, and, and the paragraph, and then we have PHP echo, and then this paragraph in here, right? And then close quotations, semicolon, and then question mark, and close angle bracket. So let's take a look at what that is. So in PHP, the echo keyword here, echo here, oh, let me, let me take that away. So in PHP, echo, okay, is used to output text. So everything in the quotations after echo, okay, 
it's going to be used to output text. So the text in this case, right, is everything inside of the double quotations. Okay. Then we have the, let me just erase some of this stuff. Okay. Then we have the semicolon here at the very end. Okay. And the semicolon is required at the end of each statement in PHP. Okay. So in terms of white space, PHP ignores it, so you can have a bunch of white space after paragraph or before paragraph or after the quotation, and it doesn't matter. PHP ignores the white space. Unless it's inside of a keyword, then it does matter. Okay, so if you put a white space, you know, in the middle of echo or PHP, then it does matter. Okay, so this code that we're just looking at will actually end up looking like this after it's been, you know, rendered on the server side and delivered to the browser, the browser actually only ever sees this. It doesn't ever see this code here. It only sees the kind of rendered HTML code here. It only actually sees this. Okay, so it just looks like any other HTML paragraph block there. So when the code is executed, it outputs the text into the HTML file and the front end receives this here. Okay, it doesn't, the front end, the browser can't render the PHP code, it just reads the HTML. That rendering of the H, uh, PHP code is done on the server side. Okay, so PHP is flexible, let's remember that, and can be also executed from the terminal, it's not just for web pages. We can use PHP as a general programming um, language to write programs that give simple instructions to the computer without involving HTML or the web. So when this is done, though, the output of the program is logged to the terminal. So it's useful for when testing functionality or for writing simple local programs. When writing a PHP script file, we still need to denote that we're beginning our PHP code by using this here, start code here, but we don't need the closing tag, okay? It's usually left out by convention, so let's leave it out. So we just have to do this, open tag, but you don't need the end tag. You can just leave it with a semicolon to end the statement. Next, let's look at comments. Sometimes we want to include text in our files that we don't want the computer to execute or display to the end user, right? So comments can be used to annotate our code to make it clearer to ourselves or to others. This is useful to prevent lines of code from being executed without deleting them, too. So there's two ways to add comments, okay? And there's a few reasons, and reason number one is that you can make notes to make it clearer why you're doing certain things the way you're doing it to yourselves, your future selves, or to other people who also might be working on that document. And also to prevent some lines of code being executed. Maybe you don't want to delete this line of code for now, but you're just trying to see what it would do without this line of code, or you're trying to test where the error is, and you want to comment it out, so you can use comments for that. Anyway, the two ways to add comments is first the single line, okay, single line comments. You use the number sign here, the pound sign, or the double slash, okay, for a single line. So anything on the line after this symbol is not executed. So for example, my first PHP statement won't be executed, or this one as well. Now you can also do multi-line. So the second type of comment is a multi-line comment. So this is used for longer descriptions, okay? And it's uh, like if you have more detailed guide on how to properly use a section of a code or to prevent several lines of code from being executed, you wanna comment out a whole bunch of code, then you use the multi-line and it will look like this, slash and an asterisk, and it ends with asterisk slash. So anything in between that will be commented out. And that brings us to the end of our introduction to PHP. Um, we won't be going into detail with PHP. We just want to learn enough to kind of have a basic understanding of it. Um, PHP will be used in uh, WordPress and uh, <clears throat> other CM, well, CHP, sorry, PHP is used in WordPress, which we'll be learning in more depth, but we won't actually be learning the PHP part of it, but more on the dashboard of WordPress. But still, it's good to have this sort of basic understanding about how PHP works uh, at the very fundamental level.